Cheers, everyone, and welcome to the Unfiltered Gentleman. And now, breaking the seal all over the finer things of life, Greg Scott and Dan. Welcome, everybody. This intro always slows down my talking. I really kind of vibe with the jazz. <laughs> I think we all know there's a jazz lover amongst us. Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, everyone loves a little jazz. Boop, boop, be doop. <laughs> But the jazz lover's not here tonight. Oh, boy. The studio just got a whole lot better looking <laughs> and a whole lot of... Wait, l- thank you. <laughs> and a whole lot less facial hair. <laughs> I am Greg. Over there, that is Scott. Hey, uh, yeah, Mary. And that is not Dan. In fact, it's Shannon. Hi. Hello. Welcome back. Thank you. It's been a few weeks. Yeah. You know, I received a lot of uh, positive feedback. Oh, I like that. When you and, De- uh, you and Deb were on the show. Uh-huh. Um calling for certain people's resigna- resignations. <laughs> oh. I don't want to say who's, but uh, so we had to have you back, especially... Well, they're not here, so... Yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't resign. He was fired. <laughs> uh, just kidding. Dan uh, still hasn't bought a car, and so that's, my guess, is what's plaguing him tonight. We'll find out eventually. Uh, but we're... I-, I heard he's looking at a sleigh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Goes right with the beard. Yeah, he's he's slaying it. Uh, but we are in fine hands tonight as Shannon steps in. We got a lot to get to on this Christmas Eve batch of the unfiltered gentlemen. We got some crotch talk, a little bit of sports news. Uh, of course, old time of the week, beer babe of the week, which is always awkward doing in front of your wife. Uh, quite the appropriate bullpen beer and a little bit of booze news. So uh, everyone's looking pretty sober over there. Oh. I'm sorry. I I forgot to run down the regular stuff. I got distracted. Don't forget to hashtag show us your beers, rate and subscribe on iTunes, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, whatever you're listening on. We're there. Rate and subscribe. Also, shout out to Simi Valley, California for being Mm -hmm. our top listening city of the week. What? Woo woo. It's pretty local. It's extremely local for Scott. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know why. It's right down the freeway from West Hollywood. That's right. So uh, thank you, Simi Valley, for being on the listenership there. And uh, thanks to Allie's review, Allie and Kelly's beer review for us last week. Brings us our burp word of the week, more like a phrase, and that is... Choke it down. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> for those of you that knew the show, burp word of the week must be... Uh, if you burp on the microphone, it must be at an attempt at the burp word of the week. And so thanks to Allie, it will be... Choke it down. All right. Yes. Seemed only appropriate. <laughs> I might try this one. Yes. We got <laughs> we oh, got man. Might try and choke it down. Uh, <laughs> we got a lot of uh, a lot of feedback after that one last week. So I thought it was only appropriate. All right. Let's, uh, let's wet the old whistles. Grab your libations, pals. It's time for Beer of the Week. And if you're drinking well, you know that you're my friend. And I'll say, I think I'll have myself a beer. We are having ourselves a beer. I was very excited to find this one at some lowly little market in the middle of nowhere the other day. Yeah, it's called like Valley or something? No, like Village something village, or other. Yeah. Yes, I'd never heard of it, never been there, stumbled across because I was sent out on a trek to find baking goods. Uh, <laughs> didn't find all the baking goods, but I certainly found some good beer. We are drinking Topa Topa's collaboration with Firestone Walker, aptly named Hazy Pale Ale. 4.9%, nice and sessionable, has a 39 and untapped, nothing on Beer Advocate, and uh, no description from either brewery. Oh, <laughs> yeah, so helpful. Yeah, they went real silent on this one. I mean, they did tell you it's a hazy pale ale. I guess the description's all in the name. Yeah. It's a hazy pale ale. Uh, it's just that. I couldn't say what hops are in it. I can't tell you what they did to it, but uh, it's a hazy pale ale, and it's easy drinking. That it is. Shannon, the not hop lover, what say you? Um, I really like it. It is a little hoppier than my preference, but uh, it's definitely a hazy pale. You get some tropical, juicy notes. It's got a nice hazy color. Um, There's not a ton of hop on the nose. You do get a little citrus, I think. Yeah, I get a little tropical on the nose. Um, Taste is very juicy and tropical and citrusy, very fruity. Uh, And it does, even though it's hazy in color, finishes up with a little dankness to kind of remind you, hey, we're still on the West Coast. It does, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Just two of my favorite. Just a hint of dank. Just a hint of (laughs) dank. Exactly. (laughs) Two of my favorite breweries right here, Firestone and Topa Topa. Scott, what say you? Um, Yeah, liking it. Um, Mm -hmm. A little citrusy on the smell. Mm -hmm. A little bit of dank. Yeah. Easy to drink. Oh, yeah. Very easy to drink. You can sip on this bad boy all day. Yes. Or several of them. 
several of them. Uh, yeah, it comes in the uh, the larger cans. What are these, like 16 ounces or whatever? Love the big cans. Who doesn't? Mm, yeah. And uh, 4.9%. I mean, this is like an all-day football drinker. Oh, yeah. I can get on board with this one. Mm-hmm. Uh, all right. Let's Topa Topa and Firestone. A couple of our favorite breweries around these parts. Topa Topa, very local to us in Firestone. Just a hop, skip, and a jump away. In fact, we'll be in their neighborhood in a couple of weeks. So excited. Probably means we'll be bringing back something tasty. <laughs> uh, all right. Let's move on to a little uh, crotch talk to get this show moving. Have a grievance to share? It's time for a crotch talk. Let's see what I got here. No, gr- Ooh, I do have grievances. I'll start off with the good. Uh, we were the wife and I here. I always say the wife and I, but now you're sitting in front of me. So I yeah. guess I should address you as if you're sitting in the room. <laughs> uh, we're invited to uh, Big Dick Nick and Coley from the Booze League's Friends Miss Party last weekend. And just thought I'd mention that it was a fucking blast. We opened some tasty, tasty beers that night. I know we brought over a Choco Vesa and uh, something from Barrel House. It was their stout. They're, yeah, their stout. They're big, it was delicious. They're big chocolatey stout. They opened up some of their good stuff and we ate until we exploded. Yeah. It's and, always fun to share beers and hang out. Mm-hmm. And then we were there until I think five in the morning. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Sounds about right. Nothing like Monday morning after staying up till five on Saturday to remind you how fucking old you are now. Yeah. <laughs> Cause it's, it's like true. Sunday, you know, we went to bed at like five thirty. Sunday, I was up at nine thirty. No big deal. A normal Sunday for me. Got shit going. Monday was like fuck. This is the shits. <laughs> the drizzling shits, as Stone Cold would say. <laughs> uh, Monday was rough. I was so fucking tired. But friends, miss was great. A lot of great food. Uh, Wiley from the Boobs League was there as well as some other friends not related with mediocre podcasting. I'm putting ourselves in that boat. Uh, so <laughs> a lot of fun. I'm glad we were invited. Always fun drinking with those guys. Also wanted to mention that uh, I brewed on Sunday Ooh. my very first New England IPA, hazy IPA. Wow. Mm-hmm. So it's chugging away right now. I mean, literally chugging away. I woke up this morning and thought we had a leak in the roof. I was like, holy fuck, because we had some leaky issues as of late. Thought, holy shit, what the fuck is that Sorry. noise? Something's leaking. I got downstairs. It was my beard just blah, 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 blah. Going crazy. That, that's a good sign for those of you who don't know much about the brewing process. It means the yeast is very happy. It got really happy this afternoon and started to clog the blow off tube where all the air comes through with beer foam, and I had to clean it out, <laughs> which uh, doesn't often happen. I one other time had that happen. That was with the stout that just exploded out mm-hmm. of the bucket back when I used buckets. And thank God that was in the shower. Yeah, because that was messy. That we had an extra shower. I just, that's where I did my fermenting. Don't have that anymore. So I had to uh, put a put the old kibosh on this one. Uh, but I'm excited. Yeast is healthy. Hopefully, I don't fuck this beer up because I have a tendency to. We'll see how it goes. And I get to keg now. I know that's exciting. That I'm the most excited about. No more bottles laying around. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Still trying to get rid of some of the old bottles. Mm-hmm. You think in them? Uh yeah. Oh, okay. I got some beer for you. Okay then. I you know, I think I handed I handed you and Dan a couple of bottles of my oak aged brown a couple months ago. Do you yeah, remember this at I, all? I do, yes. Did did you drink it? Yes. And it was good. Really? Yeah. I like was the it, oak. Was you it not keep, supposed to be good? I can't stand he it. He doesn't like it. But what? I really like I got, the oak. I got more for you then. Okay. And if I mean it is very want, oaky. It is. If anybody listening well, wants some, then I, I got oak oak brown ale for anybody who I, I oaked it for too long. Uh, and to me all I taste is oak and like some weird herbal notes or lemon or something. So. It's probably because you don't like tea. I don't. It I has do that like earthiness tea. to it. Yeah. Like, I'm not a big tea person, but if it's got alcohol in it. That sounds about right. Yeah. Yeah. No, but I, no, seriously, it, it's good. Oh, all right. Well, uh, more bottles coming your way. <laughs> if anybody uh, listening wants a bottle or two, let me know. Just, you know, pay. send $100. We'll send it right out. Right. <laughs> pay for shipping uh, plus another $100 handling fee, and I'll send it your way. Seems like a fair deal. Speaking of shipping, here's my grievance Uh-oh. for the day. Uh, our friend Allie, as of Allie and Callie, and of course our burp word of the day, choke it down. Mm-hmm, <laughs> sent me. <laughs> Shannon's face <laughs> sent uh, us some beer. In fact, our our bullpen beer is from her, and uh, I also sent her some beer for uh, you know a little Christmas beer giving as I'm apt to do. And I got a notification from UPS saying like there was a problem with the package. Like fuck, what's the problem with the package? So then it said damaged package, returned to sender. I was like, well, what the Uh-oh. shit? So I'm watching this thing, and 
honestly, I don't really know what the laws are with shipping beer. I know you cannot do it in the mail, USPS. That's against the law. UPS on their website says you can. You got to like do some things. I And it depends by state. It's within the state, though. And yeah, You're and not, I'm not shipping out of state yeah. this time. Uh, funny enough, the one that shipped out of states, a okay. <laughs> not that I did that. Allegedly, yeah. Had it been shipped out of state, uh, I had one go up north, NorCal. That one's fine. The one that had to go the shortest distance is the one that got fucked up. So it says like something about returning to sender because it's damaged and all this. I'm like fuck. So then it says it's gonna be delivered today by end of day to the return to sender, and it says delivered, but it says some weird city. I don't even know where it is. It's just this big, weird fucking mess. And then to, uh, last night, she sends me this. This is all last, yesterday. This happened. Last night, she sends me this picture like, hey, it arrived and it looks okay. And it's eight beer cans with not a mess in sight. And uh, a, even on UPS, it's funny. It said like damage, colon, Ennegrin Nighthawk Dark Lager. Like <laughs> they clearly <laughs> opened it and knew yeah. what was in it. And so I, I said, look at the Nighthawk. And she looked at it. And it was fine. I realized I sent her two and she's only got one. Uh, so one must have like popped or hissed or something. So they, <laughs> could you imagine? They if probably thought it was a bomb. Like, oh, fuck. <laughs> uh, opened it up and took it out. Probably just drank it on the spot. But like I had stickers. I hope they did. I, I hope they didn't It's a great it beer. Out. Yeah. It's my favorite beer. Um, got some stickers and coasters in there and some other like random beer swag. It's fine and dry. Like it's so weird. There's no beer anywhere except I also sent her a lightest one from Anagran and there's a little bit of like Nighthawk residue on the top of the can of that. There's no evidence of like any damage except the lightest one can was beat to shit, but it did not <laughs> explode. So that's my, good. I'm guessing they threw that fucker around like hard. Yeah. They uh, yeah. rode they, that box hard and put it away wet. They chugged one of them and then that's why everything was all screwed up. Yeah. <laughs> you're gonna chug one i don't know that i would have picked nighthawk lightest yeah. one would have been a much easier to yeah. chug they don't know any better no they have no idea what yeah, they're doing they're like oh it's dark it's yeah, probably it's... boozy <laughs> suckers it's 4.8 percent <laughs> idiots lightweight yeah so anyways uh that's my grievance way to go ups fucking up my beer shipments that i assume are illegal i don't know all right anybody any, any grievances or should we talk a little sports well, I had amazing traffic Oh, to work because, you know, the holiday and great times. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's... For no reason at all. It's not raining. There's no major windstorms. It was raining it... early in the morning. It wasn't raining. Okay. No at the winds... time of travel. Exactly. No <laughs> windstorms. But suddenly I'm hearing on the radio that all of these lights are out in the valley. Oh, no. That's the San Fernando Valley for the, those of you who are non-local. Yeah. Southern California. So, as you know, my work, I have to get off the freeway and go quite a distance through stoplights. Everyone if you didn't in, get off the freeway, you'd be working on the shoulder. <laughs> yes. Yes. Everyone in LA has apparently forgotten the rules of what to do when the light is out. Uh, you're giving them credit for ever knowing the rules. Oh my gosh. So, it took me almost equally as long to drive the entire freeway stretch as it did to go the four blocks to my office from the freeway. Sounds about right. So whatever was made, you know, made easier with lighter traffic due to the holiday. Right. Negated by lights being out for no reason. And there's one thing I know about you and light traffic. That means you're going to Starbucks. I didn't get to. Right. So you must have <laughs> been very upset. I'm just, Yes. It was disappointing. I, I could Highly imagine. Highly disappointed in, is that the electric company who handles the lights? I don't uh, know. Whoever whoever handles that. LA County, it's DWP, and they're uh, a bunch of bastards. They were the Grinch of my commute. Mm. Sorry to hear that. Yeah. yeah. No Starbucks for you. It was sad. Hope if it's, if it's SCE, I, I've already you know, yeah, we've got we a thing against them. Said our piece about SCE. Yes, indeed. DWP is no better. Yeah, I can imagine. Yeah. Yeah, people, it, p drivers in SoCal are stupid. They just... We are the worst. The worst. Well, I think here's the problem. We've got a mixture of being like the most arrogant assholes on the planet. The, yeah. yeah. Mixed with we are the melting pot of California. We get people from every fucking country where they have different rules for driving, different car. I mean, like a lot of countries have these little like smart cars and that's a big car over there. Then you, get, you hand them something with 115 horses and they don't know what the fuck to do. I, I think it's all this combined. We, assholes, idiots, and then people from other countries who don't know how to drive here 
And our uh, our requirements for getting driver's licenses in California are quite low, uh, oh, especially yeah. if you don't want the real ID thing where you're like all federally checked and able to fly. If you just want a driver's license, I think you can walk in and just take a number and walk out with one. So Yeah, probably. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, it's not surprising that we're a bunch of horrible drivers here in Southern California. Terrible. And then add rain into that. And I mean, we've talked about it before. Sky is falling. Oh, <laughs> That's why I need to move to San Diego. Not only do they have all the best beer in the world, but I love when you look <laughs> at like Google Maps in San Diego. Oh, yeah. And it says red. We have a thing like, is it actually red or is it San Diego red? Because <laughs> San Diego red it means you're doing like 45. Yeah, you're still moving. You're still moving pretty good. Yeah. Like I would I would kill for San Diego red here in L.A. Yeah. Here in L.A., red means like. Stopped. Get on Stopped out, yeah. yeah. Get on out of that car. You're not moving. Yeah. yeah. But uh, San Diego, hey, we're doing 40, 45. This isn't bad. Yeah. It's only nope. going to take me 25 minutes to go 20 miles. In LA, it's green if you're going 10 miles an hour. Right. <laughs> it just shows a little like yeah. picture of an airplane. Yeah, yeah car's moving, so hey, it's green. Mm-hmm. Congratulations. Which is a miracle in LA that if you're on the freeway and your car is moving. Yeah, that's that's it's really a parking lot. Yeah. So, all right, enough about that. Let's uh, talk about Shannon's favorite subject. And now, the sports. Brought to you by cleaninguptheglass.com. Whether it's the Baltimore Chop or the one-two punch, it's time for sports. In an interesting turn of events, the Seahawks have their eyes set on Marshawn Lynch. <laughs> you know, the one they got rid of a few years back. Yeah. And then he went to the Raiders, and now, like, hey, we want you back. We're lonely without you. He hasn't played, has he? I mean, after the Raiders, he just kind of... You tired or quit? I, or something? I don't know. Was he injured? I don't know what. I thought I he was know. on the Raiders. I didn't. I didn't know he wasn't I, playing. Other than it's the Raiders who watches them. Uh, true. We can say that because Dan's not here. <laughs> 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 uh, yeah, I don't know what he's up to, but Seahawks are eyeing him. And I didn't realize he was only thirty-three. Wow, really? Wow. Yeah, he's only thirty. I mean, which I know in football years is getting up there, but uh, dude looks old. <laughs> <laughs> I thought he was like approaching his 40s or something. I thought he was older than I was at the very least. So uh, anyways, Seahawks are eyeing him. The Ravens uh, are pulling the Patriots over here. Some of their staff was caught wearing Bluetooth ear devices on the field <laughs> over the weekend. Now, it has not been officially determined whether it was on TV. They showed Harbaugh, the coach, and the guy right behind him had a Bluetooth in his ear. It was small, but you could see it. Officials have not determined whether it is a security personnel for the team or an assistant coach. That matters. If it's security, I guess it's okay. But if it's because any, they need to be able to communicate if there's an issue. Right. I guess if it's any sort of coaching staff or team personnel, they are in deep, deep shit. Like Patriot style. They're not allowed to have Bluetooth, but they can wear those big headpiece headsets. But those are regulated by the NFL. I see. So, so yes, um, they are not allowed, to, and it's only within each other. You know, you can talk to other coaches and stuff. They got in trouble last year because too many players on the field had devices to talk to the coaches. You can have one person on the field at a time <laughs> that can communicate with the with the sidelines, and they had multiple players on the field communicating. So they got fined for that last year. They're uh, not as squeaky clean as someone might think. They're a little more on the side of the Patriots. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's starting to sound like which I didn't realize. Yeah, so it's like I said a week or two ago. I mean. The Patriots have been caught so many times for cheating. It's only because they're stupid, because all the teams do. Right. But they're just smart enough not to get, not to get caught. Mm-hmm. I think that's uh, exactly the case. Um, Eli and Daniel Jones were caught partying over the weekend after their two-game winning streak. <laughs> they won two games, everybody. Two games. And uh, it was time to party. They found them at a bar. They were playing flip cup and beer pong. And there's, there's a video on, on the interwebs, which... Really not a big deal, except it's hilarious that they win two games this season and all of a sudden it's time for a party. Uh, Greg Olson, the lord and savior of my fantasy football team, (laughs) rips the Panthers apart after another loss this weekend. Uh, They've already fired their head coach a few weeks back. Cam is on the fritz. They don't know if they'll resign him or not. And then after another loss, Greg Olson wanted to say, right now I'm not sure what our plan is. I think we want to win now, but we also want to build for the future. It's just a really tough way to operate right now. Players are underperforming. I think think it's right now a very collective failure, organizational failure. 
Fans deserve better. A lot of guys in this locker room deserve better. Coaches that have been around here deserve better. It's just been an overall failure. I think it's the best way to put it. I think you're right, Greg Olson. Good point. Great name, by the way. <laughs> Olson? Uh, yes, exactly. <laughs> uh, and you asked me to pull a very uh, favorite old sound clip of Philip Rivers. Oh, yes. Do tell. Yes, because I've been... Um, I guess I've been watching Charger games because... You're the one. I'm the one, yeah. Found I'm them. the one fan uh, that's been watching. But they've for some reason, in the last few weeks, they've all been talking how squeaky clean Philip Rivers is. That Even when he's talking shit to the other teams, it's like, hey, gosh darn, and you you, you silly guy. And he just, he just never cusses. He's just a, such, such a clean bullshit. mouth. And I thought, well, you know, I've heard him <laughs> on this very show. Right. Um Otherwise, so yeah. that's, that's kind of what made me think about it. This, this is a few years old. It came from a sports show we used to do, but it's the best Philip Rivers clip of all time. Post-game interview, asking him what the motivation was behind a field goal, and this is what he had to say. Uh, but we broke the huddle. I told Keenan, you f*** the pylon. <laughs> that's right, Keenan. You go fuck that pylon. <laughs> that's my favorite clip of all. He said that's that on a, live TV. That's our squeaky clean Philip Rivers. Yeah. <laughs> And isn't Philip Rivers known for like being the biggest shit talker in the oh, league? Biggest, yeah, yeah. He's a huge that's, shit talker. That's what cracks you because they they say that. Oh yeah, he's you know he's always talking shit to the teams, but he never cusses. So did his PR people like pay off the announcers or something? I'm not sure, but like, we're, yeah, trying, we're going to try to turn this image around. Yeah. Can you just say he's real squeaky clean? I mean, yeah, he's always running his mouth to the other team. Mm -hmm. Next, they're going to start saying he's a virgin <laughs> with his eight kids. With his eight kids, yeah. <laughs> And counting. You're right. He never had sex before in his life. <laughs> uh, moving to baseball, Dick Mountain, a.k.a. Rich Hill, <laughs> and his wife, Caitlin, were arrested outside Gillette Stadium over the weekend. They were going to the Patriots game, which, uh, as a Dodgers fan, my biggest cry here is, why are you at a fucking Patriots game? No wonder yeah. you're a free agent. Yeah. I was hoping the Dodgers would resign you until... I hear that piece of news. Yeah. Uh, they were going to a Patriots game. Caitlin had an oversized purse. They wouldn't allow her to bring it in. She made a scene, then tried to go from ticket stand or entry gate, whatever, to entry gate, trying to get in with her oversized purse. <laughs> Obviously, no one let her in. Caused a huge ruckus. She was placed in custody. Then while putting her into the police van, Dick Mountain came over <laughs> and tried to protest and get them not to put her in the van and was subsequently arrested himself. So yes. Dick Mountain. That, I think I said Dick Mountain, but yeah, Dick Mountain. Yeah, the, yeah. so they, they arrested Big yeah. Dick Mountain. Yep. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yes. <laughs> I mean, she clearly <laughs> thinks she's above the law or the rules. Right. But also full on arrest. I mean, what did she, it had to have escalated. I'm sure she was making Must a have, scene. Yeah. Um, he was told multiple times to stand down. He was trying to prevent her from being arrested. And in the process, got it. You know what it really sounds like? It sounds like they're both partying. Yeah, probably. They both had pre gamed quite a bit. Yeah, and then they a got tailgating a, going on. Yeah, a little bit of tailgating, which if you're not in Southern California, I think is legal everywhere else. <laughs> yeah, I think so. And they probably got a little, a uh, little ham ski, a little shitter. Probably walked up to the gates. And, probably had uh, some more beverages in her bag, right? Or something that you know. Yeah, and they said it was oversight, whatever it was. They, they were a little drunk, thought they were above the law. This sounds very much like something you would do when you're drunk. It sounds yeah. like a drunk. Don't arrest my wife. Yeah. Fuck you, pig. You hey, know. I'm Dick Mountain. Come right. on. Yeah. <laughs> Climb on, baby. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Ric Flair reference, everybody. <laughs> uh, and then a little basketball news. The Jazz have agreed to send Dante Exum and some picks over to the, ca to the Cavs for Jordan Clarkson. So the Jazz are really uh, trying to make a run for this thing here. Wow. They're a pretty decent team this year so far. Yeah. Um, better than the Cavs. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, they should take it. All right. What else we got here? Old Timey Word of the Week. Mumpers Hall. Mumpers Hall. It's an alehouse where beggars are harbored. All right. <laughs> so I guess, I don't know, it's like a dark room in the back of a bar where you'd store homeless people or something. What was the word again? Mumpers Hall. Mumpers Hall. Yes. An <laughs> ale house where beggars are hard. It just sounded funny. I guess to me. Maybe they called beggars mumpers back there. Maybe. Oh. Hey, there's a mumper right now. Stop Stay with the intelligent remarks. How dare yeah, you? Yeah, we know. Yes. Uh, all right. Let's, let's class things up a bit. This one's a classy dame with a great palate. It's Beer Babe of the Week. 
It is indeed. Our beer beer of the week is Wendy and her pup's apples. Aww. <laughs> uh, you can find Wendy and apples on the grams at Brew Pug SC, as in Southern Carolina there. Brew Pug SC. Uh, in this picture I'm looking at right now, she's drinking an Arrow Sol. Purple can. It's an IPA. You like the purple can. I do, yeah. Exactly. Uh, anyway, so make sure you do yourselves a favor and go follow Wendy and Apples. Apples in this picture is posing with some pumpkins. Yeah, and she's doing the whole like Rosie the Riveter pose. Yes, Wendy's doing the wh- Rosie the Riveter pose. Uh, anyway, she's got a great account over there at Brew Pug SC. Make sure you follow her. You'll be glad you did. Uh, all right. Looks like we're still sipping on our beer of the week over here. So we'll start off with a little bit of booze news. And then we'll make that call to the pen. Extra, extra, drink all about it. It's time for booze news. It is indeed. We talked a few weeks back that New Belgium was bought out by Lion Little World Beverages, a.k.a. Kieran. And one of the big things was that they were going to have to have the employees vote on whether the sale would go through or not because it is an employee-owned brewery. Well, the vote went through, and the employee owners voted in favor of the sale to Kieran, probably because everyone will be getting at least a $100,000 retirement wow. uh, fund wow. contribution or whatever. A lot of people will be getting even more, but it sounds like the bottom of the rungs are getting 100000 and then just goes up from there. Wow, Jeez. that's pretty awesome. Yeah. Yeah, not too shabby. Yeah. I would have voted for it, too. Heck yeah. I guess there's been some protests going on there in Colorado. Uh, people are not happy because there's been some labor disputes and uh, just anti-human whatever claims against Kieran. Mm-hmm. Would have been smart of me to have the article right in front of me. Yeah. That would have been more coherent sounding. Uh, anyways, people are not happy. And I think there's also a little bit of, uh, you know, New Belgium sold out. Yeah. Hurts the soul a little it bit. It does. It's a little sad. It's a little sad. I I was looking at uh, Costco the other day. They had the New Belgium Winter Folly Pack. Had 1554 in oh, there. Oh, my favorite. So delicious. And I was like, I guess we could still buy it. They haven't been bought out yet. Still waiting for the approval. Yeah, it was craft when that beer was made. It was craft when it was made. And it's still, I mean, it was approved, but uh, the sale hasn't happened yet. It's supposed to happen in the next couple of few weeks. It's going to be fairly quick, it seems. Um, so let's go buy that 1554 while it's still craft. Yeah. Uh, it's load up on it. Yeah. All the 1554. Yeah. yeah. It's a, uh, it's a sad day in 1554 news. I don't know about you guys. 1554, even though I wouldn't call it like a stout or a porter or anything was the beer that got me into dark beers. Back in the day, I was a crappy beer drinker and an IPA drinker and somebody I was at this, uh, beer bar and somebody came up to me and was like, Hey, you want to try this uh, New Belgium, whatever what is? And I was like, yeah, sure. What is it? And he said, oh, it's a darker something, something. I said, yeah, I don't really like dark beers. No, you're going to love this. It's like, yeah. He goes, look, you get to keep the glass. And he goes, honestly, if you really don't like it, I'll buy you something else to put in it. I was like, all right, fuck it. I'll try it. I got a beer on the line. Had it. Loved it. Then I started trying more beers, more dark beers, even though that's not, you know, a stereotypical dark beer. Anyways, It's sad. I went on yeah. too long about that, but it's it's a it's a sad time in beer history, I guess. I'm hoping that the other big ones like Sierra Nevada and Stone won't sell out. But Jeez, I uh, hope not. Yeah, here's the hoping. All right, let's pass this uh, this beer around. I will turn off your mic. Don't you worry about it. <laughs> I've been doing that the whole time, but you haven't been catching my eye signals. It's okay. You come over here, grab this beer. Wow, she's taking everything off. Headphones, <laughs> shirts. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, in the meantime, I'll mention that uh, San Diego-based Local Roots Hard Kombucha has acquired Latitude 33's uh, 33 Brewing Production Facility. So Latitude 33 will no longer brew in their own production facility. They've sold it to the Hard Kombucha. Latitude 33 will now be brewed at Green Flash's facility. I know Shannon can't speak, but she's a huge fan of Green Flash. <laughs> the face says it all. Yeah. Um, I guess this is probably good for Green Flash to get a little production brewing going. And uh, Latitude 33, honestly, I don't see them that much anymore. And uh, they're probably trying to save some cost. 
Yeah, you don't see them at all anymore. Not really. So, although I like Latitude Thirty Three more than I like Green Flash. So, oh, that bar sat real low. Yeah, you can't stand Green <laughs> Flash. <laughs> Not a fan. They are uh, very old school when it comes to their beers. Like their mm. their IPAs are very old school West Coast dank. Brush your teeth with a pine cone kind of thing. Not a fan. Okay. Uh, let's make a call to the pen. He calls to the bullpen for beer. Yes, he does. This one comes to us by way of our good friend, Allie and Callie. Choke it down. No need. <laughs> this one is a good one. She sent us Wild Barrel Brewing's Santa's on the Juice. <laughs> 8.2% has a 4.08 on untapped. It's a New England IPA. It says Santa's on the Juice has made an early appearance. Dry hops with Vic Secret, Cascade, and Citra, bringing you aromas and flavors of grapefruit, pine, lime, and gooseberry. Gooseberry? Gooseberry. Wow. I don't even know what a gooseberry is. No idea, but here we go. Yes. This one's delicious. Oh, here we go. It's because it's a double, huh? Yeah. 8.2. It's really good. It is definitely juicy. It is like <laughs> orange. Are you having some trouble? Just joking over here. Okay. Okay. Problems My or? first beer. <laughs> Joke it down. Yeah. <laughs> really did have to. Joke it down. Uh, tell us more about the beer while I clean my face off. <laughs> Uh, it is, it's got like an orange juice kind of pithy, uh, flavor to it. Mm hmm. Yeah, it is very juicy. And I mean that in a actual juice kind of way. But make sure your, your mouth salivate. It gives a little bit of that. Yeah. That I, I hate to do. And my apologies to those <laughs> of you with misophonia. Uh huh. I'm one of them. Scott, what say you? Yeah, a little bit of sweetness in there too. Mm hmm. Yeah. I can yeah, I, I like it. Yeah. I it, like the can. The can looks like kind of like a Christmas sweater. It does. Yeah. It's very Christmas sweatery. Yeah, a lot of citrus. It's I like hipster Santa. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Yes, it very much is. Uh, I feel like this one's going to give Scott some heartburn. A lot of citrus. Okay. I yeah. Can, yeah. Not a problem. Yeah. Tough. Tough and yeah. through it. Um, and I'll be a man about it. We got Tums. Oh, no problem. That's that's <laughs> what they're for. Yeah. Uh, a little bit of booze news left to do while we sip on this. Thanks again to Allie and Callie. Follow her on the grams at Allie, A L L Y dot I N dot. Cali, C A L L Y, not E. Nope, not I. <laughs> this is 8.2, people. <laughs> Come as I'm slack. Uh, anyways, locally here, Ladyface, Ladyface Ale House and Brasserie has sold. Whoa. Yes. Uh, if you guys are in the northern LA area or have been here and you've been to Ladyface, they've been around for about 10 years. Yeah. They really were a pioneer in the LA craft brew scene. Them and, and, Eagle Rock Brewing and a couple of others were really the only ones around L.A. for a long time. And they really had a strong, they have a stronghold in Belgian style beers. Yes, they very much focus on that Belgian style, but they do a great job of not making them taste like rotten bananas. Yes. They do great Belgians. Uh, usually when I think Belgian, I go, eh, no thanks. But Ladyface yeah. does some great beer. We've met Serena, the owner, or former owner, multiple yeah. times. She's great. Female owned. Formerly. Which yeah, yeah. I'm now, a little bummed about that. Yeah, she has sold to a uh, a guy who was just a regular there. His name is Pete Lee. The nice thing is, or hopefully potentially nice thing, is they're going to try and uh, make it a little more accessible to everybody. You know, it's the Lady Face Ale House and Brasserie. It sounds very fancy. They're just going to call it the Lady Face Ale House, I think, and Tap Room or and uh, Grill or something like that. So anyways, mm -hmm. they're trying to kind of broaden and open it up a little bit, which I I think could be in their favor as it becomes a, a more competitive beer market, especially in this area where now near Ladyface, we've got 14 Cannons, Fig Mountain, yeah. Five Threads. So they need to compete. And I think this is a potentially smart move. And just having food is, is a big edge over some of these other breweries. But I think making it more open to other people is a is a smart move. And they're keeping the head brewer. So they are. They're keeping oh, Dave. Okay. Yeah. So the, the beer should stay really consistent, which yes. is great. Uh, that is very important. Oh, and I almost forgot. They're right next to Twisted Oak. Yes, they are. Cannot forget Twisted Oak. They're double IPA. God mm. damn. So good. Uh, Anheuser-Busch partners, Tilray and Fluent Beverages, that's, uh, they're partners that they do some of the CBD drinks with, have announced that they'll be doing CBD-infused teas. Oh, wow. 
teas? Yeah. <laughs> CBD infused teas. Are you excited? I mean, you look real excited. No, not really. Oh, okay. I mean, it's kind of beer esque. You make it sort of make a tea before you turn yeah. it into beer. That's true. Uh, I mean, really, when you're mashing a beer, when you're mashing it in, that's that's a tea right there. Yeah. But yeah, uh, no thanks. I'm sure people will like it. Now, if it was THC, must, yeah, people like tea and CBD. If it's THC infused tea, <laughs> you'd be all about it. I'd be more about it than CBD tea. Joke I don't, it there. Oh yeah! <laughs> oh my gosh! Oh, man. I'm sorry. I had wow. you. Just in the nick of time. Choke it down. <laughs> Wow. Very, very nicely done. Getting that one in there. Um, yeah. I, it's been I, years. It has been a while <laughs> for everybody, really. Yeah. Uh, not, a, not a fan of teas. That just doesn't sound appealing to me. But if it could get me high, I might be a little more happy. <laughs> and in the spirit if of... milk cr- could get me high, I'd be into that. <laughs> right. I hate milk. <laughs> oh. But if it got me high... Yeah. That sounds like a horrible combo. <laughs> milk and weed? Yeah. Oh, God. Oh. Could you imagine oh, if you got man. sick or something? Oh, oh. That's why you don't drink white Russians. Did you imagine <laughs> yeah. throwing that up? Ugh. Oh, I am not the dude. Uh, in the in the spirit of Christmas, I thought we'd give you nine facts about Krampus. Mm. Oh. About Krampus. And the best quote to ever come out of Krampus. There it is. That's from the movie Krampus. This is about the Krampus. Krampus is a Christmas demon. In Austria and across German-speaking Alpine region, the demonic character is a crucial part of the holiday season. He's a devilish figure with long horns and a goatee beard, much like typical portray- portrayals of Satan. You might see him posed harmlessly on a greeting card or reproduced <laughs> in chocolates or figurines, but you might also encounter a, pr- a procession of Krampuses stalking through the town, laden with bells and chains, intimidating onlookers, or whipping them with bundles of sticks. <laughs> no thanks. No. December 5th belongs to Krampus. If you survive, you might get presents. Ooh. All I can think about is Dwight Schrute right now, by the way. December 5th is Krampus not when Krampus reigns. In the real world, people might attend Krampus balls or young men from the local Krampus group might, and G-R-U-P-P-E, not, you know, group, uh, might don carved wooden masks, cowbells, chains, elaborate costumes to run through the town in Krampusloff or Krampus run. Frightening and sometimes beating bystanders. According to legend, Krampus will spend the night visiting each house. He might leave bundles of sticks for bad children, or he might just hit them with sticks instead. (laughs) He might toss them into a sack or basket in his back and then throw it in a stream, or he might straight up take them to hell. Wow. (laughs) He sees you when you're sleeping. Yeah, they take (laughs) keeping your kids in line seriously, man. I'm liking this a lot better than the whole, like, he'll be good or Sam will bring you shit. It's like, be good or Krampus will fucking kill you. Krampus will take you to hell. Yeah. Yeah, but there's also like a kid hiding under his bed every December. Not if he's been good. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right? I guess. Be good. You want to hide under your bed, you little shit. <laughs> Number three, Krampus may be a monster, but he also pals around with Santa. Wow. Originally, Krampus was purely a purely pagan creation, said to be the son of hell from Norse mythology. But he got grafted onto Christian tradition as a sidekick of St. Nicholas, similar to figures like Zwarte Piet in the Netherlands and Necht Ruprecht in Germany. Mm. You picked the wrong person to read this story. Since the 17th century, the two have been linked in a sort of Christmas yin-yang with Krampus as St. Nick's dark companion. Costume figures, the two traditionally visit houses and businesses together on Krampus Nacht. Kind of a good cop, bad cop thing. <laughs> it really is. Good Santa, bad Santa. Yeah. yeah I like that. Uh, number four, Krampus revelers will hit, push, and whip spectators at the parades. We've sort of covered that, but whip, uh, whip. no thanks. Whip the spectators. Number five, Krampus's appearance varies, but he often has one human foot and one cloven hoof. Hmm. All right. It's hard yeah. to buy shoes. It yeah. Ooh. All left feet. Man. Uh, number six, some Austrian households had year-round decor meant to remind kids to say, stay good or Krampus would get them. <laughs> a 1950 article about the Krampus legend in Styria, a state in southeast, southeast Austria, reports that Krampus would deliver gold-painted bundles of birch sticks to children, small versions of the bundle of twigs he would use to beat people. The families would hang the birch twigs on the wall for the rest of the year as decoration and to remind the kids to stay in line. All right. The article rather primely notes that the twigs are hung 
particularly in those houses where the behavior of the children merits the application of corporal correction. There you go. Beat these kids with that stick. Beat them. Wow. Yeah. Uh, Number seven, Krampus was once banned by fascists. Between 34 and 38, when Austria Austria was under fascist rule, Krampus was seen as a symbol of sin, anti-Christian ideals, and social democrats. Thank God they came to their senses and let him back in. Right. Yeah. Either that or they were the kids that got bundles of sticks. <laughs> right. <laughs> they were now in control. Yeah. Uh, number eight, Krampus masks are valuable pieces of folk art. Mm-hmm. And number nine, you can celebrate Krampus even if you're in the U.S. Krampus has become increasingly popular on the side on this side of the pond. He's shown up on Venture Brothers, Grimm, Supernatural, The Colbert Report, and American Dad. And there's a Krampus-inspired horror movie. Beer it is. Yeah. And in an in- increasing number of American cities, you can go to a Krampus party, Krampus costume event, or even a traditional Krampus loft, which you remember was the running of the Krampus. Hmm. Los Angeles in particular has a burgeoning Krampus scene. Of course, some people, the holidays are scary enough without throwing a demon beast with a penchant for physical assault into the mix. But if you're the kind of person who goes the extra scary haunted houses at Halloween, take heart. That terror doesn't have to stop just because we entered the season of togetherness and joy. So that's Krampus for you. All right. What I, a great character he is. I can think of a lot of Krampuses in LA, as a matter of fact. Oh, yeah. They're all on the roads. <laughs> Beer it is. <laughs> and that is from Krampus, yeah. by the way. Well, I, I have to thank Dan for introducing me to Krampus. I, yeah. I've I, never heard of him until Dan. I know Dwight Schrute has did. talked about him, but I don't really know anything else beyond yeah. that. And uh, thanks to Dan for at least introducing us to the movie. Yeah. I had to watch the movie because Dan talked about it so much. Oh, have you seen the movie? I have seen the movie. I still have not. Then again, <laughs> I still haven't seen Wolf Cop because I'm a horrible person. I haven't seen Wolf Cop either. Gotta find that. I'm, yeah. I'm I think we need to do movies. an official, I'm the worst at watching. I went to film school and I can't watch movies. <laughs> we need to do an official like unfiltered gentleman screen of Wolf Cop. Wolf Cop. Like rent out a movie yeah. theater, invite a bunch of drunks. Rent out a brewery with a projection Yeah. Screen. Rent out a brewery with a projection screen, like I said. Yeah. Invite a bunch of drunks. Yeah. We can great. do like a Mystery Science Theater 3000 and talk to mm-hmm. the whole movie. Or you could just shut up and watch it. Yeah, yeah, just watch it. Yeah, have Dan talk through it. Yeah. (laughs) So uh, (laughs) halfway through, becomes his Peter (laughs) impression. Joe. (laughs) Well, uh, Peter. (laughs) (laughs) Sorry, I I can't do it like Dan can. Um, Boop boop be doop. mm -hmm. There it is. Yes. All right. That's it. That's it for tonight. It's Christmas Eve as this drops. Merry Xmas to uh, I see Krampus flying by. Yeah, to those who celebrate. As we record, it's it's actually Festivus, so happy Festivus oh, yeah. to you guys in here. And uh, have fun celebrating whatever it is you celebrate out there. Find us at the unfilteredgentleman.com on the social medias at the unfiltered gentleman, except for Twitter at unfiltered gents. You can also find Beer Harmony at beerharmonyshow.com and tweet, tweet. Beer Harmony Show on the social medias. I am at Unfiltered Greg. Scott is Unfiltered Scott on the Twitters. Are you on the Twitters? Not officially? Mm, mm -mm, I think you signed up just to get like emergency alerts and never go on. Yeah, I don't ever go on it. Yeah. (laughs) Shout out to our emergency alerts. (laughs) Hey, VC scanner. Uh, Anyways, that's it for us. Oh, and don't forget you can drunk dial us. 805-538-BEER. We hope you have a great holiday season. We'll be back next week with some beers at least one to toast to for the new years so on that note good night everybody